best advice for an agent who has yet to start really diving into social media? I know that's kind of weird, maybe, but there are people out there that haven't really um, signed on to social media or decided that's where they want to go with marketing. So best platform. It's a loaded question. It is loaded. <laughs> oh, man, I, I get the... I get wherever, the your cl- <laughs> where, where, wherever your clients are. Exa- wherever yes. your clients Perfect. are. If Perfect. you don't have the time to do all of them, don't. Like, if you yes. really only have the time to be on Facebook and Instagram and that's the platforms you know, just do those because they're there. Mm-hmm. And then there's free tools that you can use. Like, they have their uh, meta business suite that you can connect all of it and schedule out posts, and it's all free. Yeah. Right? Okay, yep. So you don't have to be on all of them at once. Great. Yeah. You that's don't have good. to be on that one that's like far out that no one's ever heard of before. <laughs> if you don't like the platform. Lot. Yeah. If you don't like the platform, you're not going to enjoy what you do on it. So okay. I don't know. What, what do you think? No, Dan? I'm not the same one. <laughs> pretty in cahoots. Um, yeah. I would say it, it kind of depends on the agent, right? Yeah. So um, like demographically, yeah. Where are your, where is your sphere that you already have? Yep. And where is your target market, right? That bingo, yeah. So like it's the, that planning part again. Yeah, it's almost like if you plan, you succeed. Hey, you but don't over plan. Yeah, right. Don't, yeah, don't like uh, just tread water forever. <laughs> never do anything about it. Um, but yeah, I would say you know, if you, I would say all of them, ideally, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then you get into the like the ROI for your time again, yes. right? Um, and how can you repurpose? How can you um, kind of tailor or take the same content and you know make it for each individual platform? Not everybody has the time to do that, especially mm-hmm. somebody who's just starting out. It might be a little yeah. overwhelming. Yep. Um, so I would say like basically thirty five or under Instagram. Okay. Thirty five or older, or thirty five or older, or thirty six and older. I guess don't need the overlap. Um, <laughs> thirty six and older, uh, Facebook, and then if you have like a. Um, if you came from a um, very professional field, like there's a certain, um, so I, I used to be an engineer and uh-huh. LinkedIn was king. Sure. Everybody was on LinkedIn. Yep. Um, so if you, you know, if you were, uh, you know, in some field where LinkedIn was huge and you have a whole sphere on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. that's a great, you know, that's a great way to contact the sphere you've already ha- you already have. Um, and where you can get the most like bang, right. Mm-hmm. For your, your sphere that you already have right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, if you're trying to if you're trying to grow, you know, grow your sphere. Ideally, you want to be everywhere, right? Right. Um, and you just want to be able to tailor, um, like, you want to be able to tailor tailor your post for your Instagram market, for your Facebook market, and your LinkedIn market. Right? Okay. Yeah. If you you know have the time and you have the content and you and you want to do it, or you have somebody doing it for you, mm-hmm. um, that kind of thing. Oh, that was great. Um, that kind of rang a bell true to me because you you hit the nail on the head with repurposing. So I think with time management, the first thing before we go into repurposing content is, do you have a platform? I know, Luke, you said there's a free with Meta Business Suite if you're sticking to Facebook and Instagram. But if you're trying to do LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever else you want to do, TikTok, Snapchat, any of them that you're trying to do, um, what's your, what's a good program or where do you seek out to try to make that more efficient for yourself to post everywhere? Like a social media management platform. Yes. Yeah. What do you got? Do you use one? I do. (laughs) I love Sendable. It's designed for agencies, I know, but you can post to uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Google My Business. You can post updates to your Google My Business page. Mm. Um, And they added uh, TikTok posting recently, and they're adding Instagram stories so you can automatically post to your stories. So you can schedule out pretty much everything on major platforms and YouTube, and it has RSS feed. So for people who don't know what that is, if you have a blog, it has an RSS feed that essentially tells the internet where to find it, like mm-hmm. its own personal address. You can automatically have Sendable pull posts from that feed every time a new one comes in, mm-hmm. automatically schedule it as a social post and send it out. So if you just have times for blogs, it will automatically post it to wherever you want it to go. So cool. segueing into pre-purposing. So if I've got an hour a week that I can really devote to sort of <laughs> doing that marketing plan, right? I'm going to devote an hour a week and I just want to set it and forget it. 
So I could use one of those or I could choose to do the blog and then hook up all that stuff and it would just do it for me. Yeah. What you're saying. You can automate a lot of it. Um, you probably really have a really efficient, efficient method for repurposing content. Um, I always, video is really easy to do Mm -hmm. and everyone really likes short form video content. We consume a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so much so that YouTube has now said, we're going to do shorts because everyone likes TikTok. Mm -hmm. TikTok really changed the game. Um, and, and everyone's just trying to tread water to like (laughs) keep up with them. Um, but if you can take a video or We'll use this as an example, yeah. right? So here at Spar, uh, the way that we do content now and we have been moving forward is we record a video podcast of it. Right. And then I get that and I have the audio from it. I have the video from it. I can post it all as one video, as a podcast video on YouTube and Spotify. Mm-hmm. And then I can distribute it as a podcast to all the other platforms. Then I get to take that down and I can do a few things. One, I break it down into micro learning videos that we can add to our library of resources. Go to our micro learning video. It's really awesome. Kristen worked really hard on it. (laughs) Just do it. Do it. And then I take that on further and I say, all right, what are some short 30 to 60 second clips that I can pull from this to now fill out our social media calendar? Like teasers kind of things. Teasers, yes. Um, But mostly the purpose of it is to provide short informational videos that are going to increase our engagement with our members digitally. Because that's one of our goals here is we want to engage our members digitally and provide them resources there. So that's another way that I can do it. So I can take the clip that I'm talking about right now, like me talking right now about this and turn this into a short 30 second clip, even though I'd probably talk longer than that because I tend to do that (laughs) and post that to um, reach our members and tell them what's going on. You can do the exact same thing. And if you are good at recording video yourself, like, you know, awesome. If you're not go talk to Dan, like (laughs) he probably has a price structure set together where he can bulk record something for you and break it all down. And then you probably don't even have to worry about it. And then you can just schedule out what you want. So you take all those little video clips and you load them into sendable. Yep. And you say, these are the dates I want them to go out yep. on all these different platforms. And then I use uh, chat GPT or some mm-hmm. other AI to help me write something uh, for a caption that really grabs attention. Sure. I do adjust it because it's not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it doesn't work great all the time. And, you know, I have to revise it and stuff like that. But then if you're not good at captions, if you're not good at creating things like that, use AI tools to mm-hmm. do it. Like, you know, another one I really like is Canva for this repurposing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Right? So you can load in your video or your photos, you know, if you've got a bunch of photos, um, and sort of create all of these different posts as well for all the different uh, platforms. And so minus the video editing time, it so if we record a 20-minute video audio, so we've got it, and without all of the editing, because I know you do some crazy editing. It's, it's not crazy. It's standard. <laughs> yeah, it's not crazy. that complicated. He's kind of Okay, like, technically it's the good. professional way to do it. but yeah. Okay, so a general rule of thumb, some, some basic editing. Like I'm recording myself on my phone. Yep. 10, 15 minutes I'm going to talk about, you know, this neighborhood, this community, this house, whatever it is. Yep. Um, I'm going to record about 10 minute video and I want to do the editing on my phone and then I want to do like you said and, you know, have clips and post them out there. What do you think all in all that's going to take me to do? Depends how good you are at like (laughs) using the platform. If you've never used the platform, it's going to take you a lot longer. Now, if like I did it and Dan probably has a time frame that he could do it on, like it would take me probably about 10 minutes to put that video into Canva and then adjust like where I want the framing to be add an intro and an outro and export it. And it'd be done in like 15 minutes. And that's just one to break that up in the clips. It'll be a little bit longer, but I mean, you can probably get what, let's say 10 different clips out of that. Mm -hmm. It's probably only going to take you 30 minutes Mm -hmm. if you know how to use the platform. Okay. So I could do a 10 minute video and then spend an hour working on my different clips, working on social posts, taking photos out of those clips writing a blog out of the video, adding the video to the blog. I mean, all of it, right? So now I've got like a month's worth of content with an hour's worth of time. Yep. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah. And we, we, so we primarily focus on just the houses. Uh, we do a lot of like short, you know, reels type video, yes. right? Um, so another, another thing we should talk about, um, all these social media companies can change anything they want at any time. So this, like, <laughs> yeah, they can. It's their can, platform. Like, you know, I, I, at the time of recording, yes. this is hopefully good information. Uh, but you, you also have to, you know, if this is three years down the road and somebody's watching this, the game might have changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Facebook is now meta and we're all living with, uh, you know, headsets on in a virtual world. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and they, so they, long story short, they just, <laughs> Facebook just chopped their reels length to 60 seconds, yeah. still 90 on Instagram. Mm. Um, just totally throw my business for a loop. Meta. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, but anyway, so, so we'll, we'll deliver a reels video usually, um, you know, within the time constraints of whatever service they want it for. Uh, but you can do that same kind of deal, right? Where you can take the full video, right? Mm-hmm. And like a lot of times, you know, we try to make them as engaging as possible, but if you can, and I don't know, um, I don't know if there's an insight that lets you know when people click off on, um, every single, um, every single platform. Um, I know YouTube is really good for this for a long time, uh, but practically not everybody's going to watch the whole video, right? right? They might watch 15 seconds. Mm-hmm. Some might watch 30 seconds. Some might watch the whole thing, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but what you can do is you can you can load this into a Reels editor, you know, on Instagram, Facebook, that kind of thing, and they've really become really user friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of what they're going after, right? To get mm-hmm. people to use it. To use and, them, yep. But you can literally load this whole clip in, and there's you know bounds on each side, and you can drag them, you know, and you, and you can take a 10 second clip from the middle of the video, yeah, post it as another reel, right? Sure. So you can have one 90 second property tour, and you can make eight videos from it, mm-hmm. right? Or maybe now it's under contract. Well, now you put you can you know Sold. hit text, yeah. yep, <laughs> yep, under contract. Um, and one thing one thing we tell our agents to do, or yeah, we tell our agents to do is. Um, you can scrub the music and then add different music <laughs> to better hit your target market, right? Mm-hmm. So if you have a if you have a younger following on Instagram, you can do like some more upbeat, mm-hmm. um, crazy music, and you can. It's really easy to just scrub the music, go into their library, and add new music, right? Mm-hmm. Um, whereas if it's say it's Facebook or it's an older market um, that your you know your video is going out to, you can have like maybe slower mm-hmm. or um, smooth. Yeah, not jazz. Technica. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, um, you know, something that that group of people might, yeah. you know, respond better to. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a lot of value in the in the user friendly real editors as well yeah. um, that oh, people can advice. quickly take advantage of. And right. they have templates within Reels now, so you literally just upload the photos mm-hmm. you want, and it automatically puts them in those spots. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong. I think Canva also has similar functionality with the. Moving the um, endpoints to clip your video, adding the, uh, adding some sound, adding you know, animated little fun things over it, and then export the whole thing. Yep. Right. Okay. So if you are just using Canva for everything, you can still do it all in there. You don't have to necessarily use a second program. No, okay. you don't have to. Okay. It's just if you want to do it all on your phone and you're just doing like Instagram and mm-hmm. Facebook, the real editor is super good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, direct <coughs> posting. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so one thing I'm going to comment with repurposing also is we've got uh, many of our members that you know work with um, work with communities where English is not their first language, and so my two cents, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about AI right now. And because Luke brought up chat GPT that he uses, you know, some AI to help write maybe some of those engaging headlines to even get you to look at the post. Um, Spar is working on, uh, an AI and chat GPT class, but oh, cool. one of the things that I would encourage is uh, being familiar or at least learning some of this technology because you could potentially, when you're creating some digital marketing things, let's say it's in Canva and you've got some verbiage in there, you can copy, so you've got your English flyer, let's say, or your social post. You can copy that text, have it translated using AI into Spanish, into Hmong, into whatever language you're looking for, um, paste that back in there, you know, use AI to sort of translate it into another language, translate it back to English to make sure that it still makes sense, especially if that's not 
your language that you necessarily speak fluently. And then you have now multilingual lingual content to post out there to those communities that you're trying to serve. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and, I never, right? never thought of that. Yeah. AI is just making our lives so, more efficient. It's a little, like, yeah, a like little plug for a few. Like, it's amazing. It's yeah. so much fun. And well, and that's the thing is it's been around. Right. Like, I know we were having this conversation of like Jasper.ai has been around. I've been getting ads for them for like five years. <laughs> And I totally thought it was like a virus because <laughs> it reminded me of a virus that I used to see that would like try and get you to like click on something on yeah. MacBooks years ago. But like, n- I mean, I've learned a lot of stuff from you on chat GPT because <laughs> I finally was able to get it and play with it. And yep. the amount of prompts that you've given me that are like so amazing <laughs> that are making it more effective and efficient and then gets me going creatively of, well, what if I try this? Or what if I try this? Or how would I try X, Y, and Z? It's like, it's yeah. so empowering to be like, like, and you even said to me once, it's like having two of yourself. Yep. It right? Really just makes it's you more efficient. Yeah. It's having it can, two of you. Yes. If you learn, you know, how to use it in that, in that, in that context, um, which is why we're creating a class about it. So does Canva, because I haven't yeah. done any of a Canva's AI, does Canva allow you to translate yet? Or is that only something that you have to pull into like chat GPT? Um, I don't know that I've seen a translator. Have I seen a translator in Canva? I don't know that I have. I would have to They go should back really add that. Um, I know they've add, they added about 12 or 14 different AI tools in a matter of like a week and a half after, <laughs> after <laughs> chat GPT like got real famous. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so they've got things like, um, they have magic, write Or, you know, Canva's version of chat GPT. So it'll, you know, output text. If you give it a prompt, like, Hey, how do I do this? Or give me a suggestion for an engaging social you know, heading, uh, heading for this blog post or, you know, whatever you're looking for. It's got that. It's got, you can write text and then tell it you want a picture of a Tudor style home with a chimney and bushes in the front, you know, whatever, however you're going to describe this perfect house for this marketing flyer you're doing. And it will output four examples for you. Wow. Um, just generated, te- uh, generated uh, artwork that, doesn't belong to anybody because it's not a real place. That's so cool. <laughs> right? <Wow>. So, <laughs> I love um, it so much. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, just side note, a lot of this stuff exists, but, um, and it's got, it's got some of the same AI tools that, you know, we've been using for years with different like photography touch ups and, yeah. um, you know, stuff like that. But their background um, remover tool is <laughs> stellar. I don't put anything <laughs> into Photoshop anymore. I go to Canva to do it yeah. because it does it faster. It's pretty good. Yeah. Take note, Adobe. Oh, wait, you're probably going to just. Just buy Canva like you do everybody. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So it just in the world of repurposing, I mean, you know, think about the time you spend and then how much you can do in that if you really only have an hour to devote a week, how much you really can accomplish if you learn the tools to make your time more efficient. Right. So and then you know, the schedulers, the, you know, automated, um, you know, apps, the you know, assistance programs of editing and just all of those things. And you can really, for all those that think, well, I, I haven't done social media or I don't want to do social media because it takes too much time because we all know you need to be consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it takes too much time, you know, we've come light years, even in the last 10 years of what you can do with your time to sort of get that consistency on social, right? So, okay, so in the world of consistency, what's your recommendation for, you know, having an active social presence with marketing? Yeah, you know, um, I think I think as much, you know, within, within reason, right? I'm going I'm to, mm-hmm. uh, as much as you can, right? Post um, 10 times a day. Eight, <laughs> 18 Every single times. hour. Well, I guess that would be true for Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, but no, I, I would say like three to five times a week. Okay. You know, really, I, th- I think being consistent um, is more important than anything. So mm-hmm. if you can post consistently once a week, mm-hmm. um, that's better than posting, you know, seven days in a row and then taking two months off. Sure. Um, which is, some, you know, it's hard to do. You know, I've, I haven't been perfect with it. Yeah. You know, um, it's hard to do. And I think really the, um, 
you know, setting up a system that'll mm-hmm. allow you to be successful, right? Whether yeah. that's scheduling stuff out, if that works for you. Yeah. It's kind of, everybody's different, right? Yep. Maybe you do it on your lunch break and you do a post every, every day when you're eating lunch. Yeah. Or whatever it might be. Um, just whatever will allow you to be consistent mm-hmm. um, and post, you know, the right things at the right time um, is, the, is the biggest deal, I think. Okay. You agree with that or you got something else to add? No, I agree. Do it as much or as little as you can. Okay. Like whatever is going to work for you and be consistent. I always like to say that there's three key things that you have to like answer, three mm-hmm. key questions. Who is your target audience? What type of content do they want to see, right? What are you producing for them? And how are you going to be consistent? So if that's one, I agree with them. One mm-hmm. post a week, just do one post a week. Mm-hmm. You know? I'm thinking in the world of, a, in, you know, trying to, put myself in as a realtor here we all know their schedules are like super busy or super slow and then when they think they're slow they get busy at the drop of a hat right yeah <laughs> like, Go on vacation, you're gonna, yeah you're gonna yeah, exactly <laughs> everybody knows that but you you think you have the afternoon to do something else to you know go take ce and then the last minute your you know your client that you've been working you know six months with is like urgently needing you right now right so it changes at the drop of a hat. Um, so I guess in in my mind, if I were a realtor, I would be big into time blocking, number one, because I feel like that would be like the make or break for me. Um, so I think for those that may practice that, um, you know, using your calendar, time blocking, and just block out a time that you're going to sit down and do your marketing plan for the week. And then should something come up, that doesn't mean you can't post the rest of the week. You yep. know, you've got those set up. Um, you know, you took your hour or your two hours and you did your whole plan and you scheduled out all your posts, but then, yeah, then something comes up and you're at, uh, you know, you're at a function or you're, you know, doing something else that, yeah, absolutely on your lunch break or there snap a quick picture. Right. So there's nothing wrong with adding more to it, but at least you've got the consistency time blocked to sort of set it up. So. And with these AI tools that exist now, it goes a lot faster. Yes. Like, and before to create some of the social posts that were like pictures with nice graphics and stuff, Mm -hmm. you'd have to go into Illustrator. Canva does most of the work for you now, and it's so much easier to move and adjust elements than it used to be. So that's another class we're bringing to Spar. Yeah. Canva. I'm pretty excited about that one. That one's going to be. Canva. Yeah. You showed me the outline. I was like, this is really cool. (laughs) (laughs) We've got got new, new classes coming this fall. Love it. Um, Okay. So I'm just going to, I just have one last question on my little list here. Um, Analytics. What do you know? What do you like? How do you use them? Yeah. Um, I would say number one, you have to have a professional account to use any type of analytics. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, So I don't, I don't forget what they call it. Uh, it's a business account, a professional account, uh, something like that. I think they even have creator accounts now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all, all kind of the same deal, right? <laughs> um, at least the way I understand it. Um, but that's that like unlocks insights for you. So I, mm-hmm. I've talked about it before, and then people are like, "Well, I don't, I don't have that button. Where is it?" Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the first step, right? Okay. Um, professional account. Um, and then you know, past that, I think the biggest, you know, the biggest thing you can take away is it's just it's just data that you can use to make decisions, right? Mm -hmm. So, and practically any decision related to social media, right? Um, So, you know, who's interacting with your content, their age range, where they are, um, you know, what what time they're most active, Mm -hmm. right? So you can use that information to plan out when you're, if you're scheduling posts, when to do them. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you're not scheduling them, when you got to get up and do it or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, make time to block. Um, that target market age range demographics. Mm-hmm. So like, um, I can see, I went in there today and like, I have, I think a lot of people who interacted with my last post was like 25 to 34 or something. Right. Okay. So now next time I know, oh, okay, I can, I can tailor, you know, maybe incorporate elements that mm-hmm. will be, um, good that for that music. group of people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. House music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Put it on there. Um, <laughs> You know, and and maybe it might be different, right? So Mm -hmm. it's, um, and that's like the biggest, the biggest thing with marketing, like, you know, kind of how we started was understanding that goal, right? And who you're talking to and, you know, tailoring it to them. Yes. Um, So the the insights really like, that's, that's what you can do, right? You can figure out who, who's in your sphere, who's looking at this stuff um, and how can I optimize what I'm doing for them kind of thing. How often do you look at, at uh, analytics for Spark? 
Um, some, some, sometimes it's weekly. Um, most of the time it's monthly because I like to look at a, a period of time. Okay. Because I especially watch the how, what time are people interacting with us because mm-hmm. it changes all the time. Mm-hmm. Like at one point it was like 9 a.m. for like a month straight. Wow. And then at some points it's been 4 o'clock, 2 o'clock, noon, right? Different days of the week or... I mean, does um, it get that specific? No, okay. Sendable doesn't get that specific. Okay. I wish it did. <laughs> um, but it just compiles when they're on average. And then a lot of social media management platforms will have a optimized posting times. Um, so you can click it and it'll automatically run through and be like, well, based on previous posts that have been posted this day or based mm. on X amount of days of activity, this is the best time if you're going to post this today. Hmm. And like uh, Hootsuite will actually give you best days to post as well. Okay. And same thing with, um, uh, what is it? Um, Meta Business Suite. They'll also tell you what are the best days that you're going to receive engagement based on when people are typically seeing your content. Oh, okay. So that. Those having those tools, I really watch that. I also really watch um, how many people it reaches too. Um, and typically, you know, your reach is going to vary. Um, and I have this beef with Facebook <laughs> that they are really inconsistent about what actually constitutes as being able to show to more people. Mm. Um, so Facebook, I've had posts that have uh, had more engagement and seen by less people. Mm than a post that has half the engagement but got seen by more people. Oh, and I have no idea. I know I'm supposed to be the expert on this topic, <laughs> but that's that's sometimes you're going to run into stuff yeah. like that and you just have to be like, okay, well, I tried. Yeah. But having what your key metrics are and what you consider success. Sure. So we call those KPIs, key performance indicators. So whether that's a, a, if my post is not getting, you know, on average your post get, five, you know, likes or 10 likes or 20 likes, whatever it is. If that's your average, Mm -hmm. then you know, okay, well, if I get a post that's under that, well, that content didn't do well. Right. And ask the question why. And then that's when you can go to the analytics. Was it the time I posted? Was it content or the Mm -hmm. specific content? If it's a video, look at the time that they clicked off. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things. That's where a lot of the time suck comes in. Yeah, Yeah. figuring it out. Analytics. Mm -hmm. And if you are a really analytical person, there are people who just have jobs like analyzing marketing, like just doing the analytic stuff behind it, right? There's a creative side and there's an analytical side. So Mm -hmm. if you're really into that, Go ham, right? <laughs> Put as much time as you want to. Yep. Um, but understanding what you view as success and what your goals are is going to help you determine what within the analytics is actually important to you, mm-hmm. right? So if you're someone who you use a lot of stories, okay, well, best posting times, you're going to want to ask, check Facebook of when do most people watch my stories, right? Mm-hmm. Or when do I normally see people actively posting stories or stuff like that? Because mm-hmm. then that's what you're really focusing on. Sure. So, I mean, it's hard to be specific yeah. when it's all based on what you're wanting to set as your standard. Absolutely. Well, and like Dan said, then with you could do the same thing over and over and then suddenly it doesn't work anymore. Yep. Maybe they change their algorithm. <laughs> they, they do. With Instagram, they change it like every week at this point. <laughs> it's amazing. So yeah. we just don't know. You just have to keep trying. Um, and, and with that, just keep doing what you're doing, doing then. Like yep. if you are not able to pin down why the algorithm keeps changing, don't change yourself. Like yep. just continue to produce what you want to produce because then it's going to be fun. And even if not a ton of people are seeing it, maybe at one point it will blow up, right? Like that one post I did on my personal Instagram. I just posted like some photos that I had that I had done in Chicago over a year ago and was like, hey, I'll post these as a reel and didn't really do well the first like few weeks. And then a month later it blew up. So something changed in the algorithm, yep. right? It's more people saw it. So um, just because there may be people listening or watching um, that – you know, they are kind of newer to social media. So can you just quickly define, because we've talked a lot about, you know, impressions or engagement. Or, oh, yeah, I always you know, forget to do that. <laughs> so just what are those different things on the different platforms and what do they really mean? Uh, so what, impressions and reach are kind of synonymous, right, for the most part? 
Yeah. So reach is how many actual individuals you reached. Impressions is how many times it was actually seen. So you can have one thing seen by the same person multiple times. Happens a lot when you actually do ads, Mm -hmm. right? So that's why that number is typically bigger because you're like, well, it says I reached this amount of people, but then why is that higher? Mm -hmm. It's two different things. Mm -hmm. One is reaches. This is how many actual people saw it, right? So let's say that's 500. So like unique visitors. Yes, unique visitors. And every platform calls them differently. So I'm just going with Facebook right (laughs) now. Um, And then impressions is how many times, like how many times that's been seen by all of those people. Okay. So So that could be 600. So I'm, I'm counted as one reach. Yep. One unique person, visitor, looker, whatever. Um, but every time I scroll back to it, on my phone, it's more impressions. Yep, because if you go back to that, and that really happens a lot with video, is mm-hmm. like going back to stuff, yeah. especially on TikTok. Or if you are running ads and that ad keeps being shown to someone because maybe they clicked on the ad, like maybe they did something other that it was like, well, you look like you're probably going to, mm-hmm. right? So that's why it showed it to that person again. Okay. Um, what are some of the other ones? Well, engagement, right? Likes, comments. Yep. Um, saves, I think that would go into it for a reshares. Lot of stuff. So some kind right. of um, activity with that post, right? You yeah. actually Just doing something, taking with it. an action. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yep. Um, and like 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 Luke said, these can be like different, right? They can yeah, change all the different what they what they measure as <laughs> as what. And like one thing that I always like to say about the social media services is you have to almost look at them like a business, right? Mm. And like kind of, we can't, we're kind of going back to the other thing, but um, like they're a business that wants you to stay on that yep. uh, using their mm-hmm. service, right? Yeah, yep. Um, so understanding that, like, the, the algorithm explicitly changes all the time, right? They're they're trying to say, oh, well, if people are liking your content, you're making good content, so we're going to show your content mm-hmm. to more people. So it keeps people on the yep, that service, makes sense. and then they, we can sell stuff to them, right? Yep. Um, but, like, it's hard to... They're, they're just trying to tweak that algorithm to mm-hmm. keep you there longer, yep. right? So that's why, like... Like Luke said, with the consistency, like mm-hmm. like we we can't we're never gonna fully understand right. the exact source code and how, you know, a like exactly correlates to a comment sure. or what a save does in relation to a like or maybe a view. Um, but it's just they're trying to plan it out to keep people there, right? And try to decide what people find value in yeah. that will keep them. No, that makes sense. And if your content isn't being seen by people, it probably means it's not good. Like if you don't have anyone watching it mm-hmm. and you like you've been doing it consistently for a month, two months, three months, four months, mm-hmm. and it's not doing anything, if you're still liking it, keep going. But then you gotta ask, why is no one watching this? Probably because there's other content that's better than that. Mm-hmm. That because everyone is producing content now. In the early days of the internet, it was easy to get found mm-hmm. because not everyone was doing it. Now everyone and their mother is doing it, right? right? So there's so much out there. So it has to decide what it wants to show people. And like Dan said, it's only going to show the best of the best of what <coughs> is going to keep you on the platform. Mm-hmm. And that goes into there's actually different kinds of algorithms mm. and how it decides it shows content to you, uh, which that gets really complicated. But there is a interest-based and then there's also a um, relationship-based method. And um, Instagram is losing right now because it's an interest. It's not an interest-based one. Mm-hmm. And they are, well, you follow these people, so therefore you're going to like this post that this person who you follow liked. But that's not always the case. But it's not always the case. So that's why for a long time you'd get the same, like, same type of like real trend Mm -hmm. seven to 10 times in a row, which is why I stopped using reels for a while and Mm -hmm. watching them. Cause I would be like, I don't need to see, Oh, this is a, I don't need Mm -hmm. to see it 20 times in a row. And so you would leave. And that's why they've consistently changed it. Every single, it feels like week Mm -hmm. is because they're trying to play catch up and move away from that Mm -hmm. to more interest based. That's my theory. I don't know for sure. Because, I mean, they're not going to tell us, but that's what my theory is because they have guidelines on their website that say this is how you get the most impossible, like, reach, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the best practice to follow. And one of those is sharing and, um, you know, making things that, like, you know, they kind of delved into how they 
rank things. Yeah. And then with uh, TikTok, they're only showing you what you want to see. It's only interest-based. Right. So that's why your number of followers doesn't matter at all. Right. Where it matters on Instagram, doesn't matter on TikTok. So that's a little sidetrack on basically saying that the algorithms are different. <laughs> Go watch a ton of videos on it. There's a lot of different theories if you want to know more. But if you don't want to get complicated, just do something. Just, just do what you like. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so very, very last thing before we end this. Um, I just want to make a, a point on kind of covering some maybe ideas. What couple things do you think ideas should people post about? And here's why I'm asking. If we've got new agents, they don't have listings or even maybe not new agents don't have listings because let's face it, inventory issues. Um, what do you post about if you don't have a listing? Because that's like everybody's go-to as a realtor. realtor. Uh, what, other things because you shouldn't just post this home for sale or this home is open house because no offense I have a lot of realtor friends and that's really annoying to see <laughs> I kind of skip past them all um, or put them on a, a like a pause I don't want to see your stuff for a while because I'm tired of seeing that um, so other than listings what do you got this is like the, the exact opposite of what you just said um, I don't think the listing stuff is that bad. Really? Um, and he, I'll tell you why. Okay? okay. So me and you, all three of us actually, yes. we're in real estate, right? We, yes. we know a million realtors. Yeah. Yes. Right? <laughs> so that's all I get too. It's yeah. all it's all realtors, all listings, all that stuff. But if you're just like a, an average person outside of real estate, yeah. which like the majority of homeowners would be or you know, people who might buy and sell, it's good, you know, it's good content for you to see, right? Because it, mm. it's not as like bombarding. Oh, that makes us, sense. Right? Yeah, because we're in it all. The Annoying time. to me because that's all. I, <laughs> right, those so are all my friends. <laughs> so I, I would say like that to start. Um, but also, you know, don't be afraid to be personal. Is what I would say. Okay. Um, as a as a realtor, you're a. Um, I mean, there's there's different kinds of realtors, and people have built their business in different mm-hmm. ways. Um, but I think just getting in front of people, kind of like the same thing, right? You're just being a friend. You're just mm-hmm. being out there, and people see your face and they see what you're doing, whatever that is. Um, and they know you're a realtor, right? They, yeah. they should know, or if they click your yep. profile, they know you're a realtor, or, um, whatever it might be, but just staying kind of relevant in that person's life passively, okay. right, in, in your sphere. Yeah. Um, so I, I always said, uh, as a general rule of thumb, 80-20, right? 80% personal, 20% business. Okay. Um, and that way you kind of get away from, yep. you know. Not just all just for sale houses. Totally, yep. yeah, yep. totally bombarded. Yep. Uh, but I think it's a good thing to... to have in some capacity, yeah. right? Um, and especially if you're just getting into it and you're, you know, you want to get serious about mm-hmm. it and you need to prove to people that you're in real estate, right? right? So if they, if you were like, you know, whatever you were doing before, maybe people don't know that yet, Yes. right? Um, so then maybe you up that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one thing we, we do for like our new agents, we'll give you a library of photos, you know, put nice. just listed or, you know, whatever that, maybe not just listed, um, that wouldn't make sense, but um, you can put, load it into Canva, you mm-hmm. know, put information on it, market updates, um, whatever the heck you want to do. Um, you know, if you don't have that professional side content yeah. yet. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I mean, hey, I went to Nelson's ice cream today. Look, what I got mint chocolate chip. What's up? Yeah. You know? yeah. I, I think it's it has value. Well, and it's a neighborhood known place. Those are always great. Okay. So what is your go-to advice? What should I post if I don't have any properties? Uh, post about your knowledge. And do it in a fun way, hmm. right? Um, especially if you're a new agent and you don't have listings. Prove to me that you know what you're talking about and be confident that you know a lot, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that does come with actually having to know what you know, right? Mm-hmm. But if you take the time to really learn your role and get a mentor or read a ton of books or watch a ton of videos, you're going to be able to make your own content on that stuff, mm-hmm. right? Um you know, and, and yeah, take photos when you're out with people, mm-hmm. you're right. Um, people love to see that he, he's exact, you know, Dan's exactly right. Like 80, 20, cause the more personal that you can make it and give them a glimpse into you, you know, goes back to people love to love to buy. They hate to sell. They yep. don't want to be sold a new listing, right? You know, you got to do those things cause it's part of your marketing plan when you, you know, talk with a client. But, um, I always like, I read a book called, uh, um, by a guy who got to a million followers in like 60 days or 30 days. Um, and he talked about, um, 
the way that we communicate as individuals and as humans, we all want something different. And so if you include something that is fun, something that is emotional, and something that is knowledge-based and factual, those are the three predominant ways that we communicate as humans. So whatever content you're producing, whether it's a fun ice cream day, right? Make something, you know, give something for each one a person, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether that's, you know, going through a house, that, or that's a knowledge. And the fun could literally just be the background, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be, you know, if you're not an overly expressive person. So um, make something that's informational, essentially, something that's fun, and then something that has like, you know, um, emotional weight, makes you feel something, yeah. whether that's happy, sad, excited, whatever. Awesome. Does that kind of help? Yeah. Um, and ask chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> what should I that post today? Um, yeah, I would just follow that up with uh, two things. My one tip, I guess what I would uh, recommend, a little bit of both of you said it, but um, is education. So, you know, when you're not, when you don't have properties to market, um, besides, you know, doing the personal thing in the business side of, you know, that 20%, um, you know, find educational material to share. So things like what the, what the interest rate is, why, you know, what inventory is like, um, and then have a, a real dialogue response to go with that. Um, because the more you can educate the public, I mean, chances are not everybody knows that, uh, there is the potential for somebody who is a first generation, first time home buyer who wants to buy in the Rondo neighborhood can actually have potentially up to like a hundred thousand dollars in down payment assistance. Who knows that? You know, I don't see it marketed everywhere. It is yeah. marketed some places, but it's not everywhere. And so why wouldn't you be the person to sort of get that word out? Right. And then whether it gets you, it gets you a person or not, but you're helping to spread that word. And so I would, I would say education. And then the last thing I will end today's podcast with is um, no matter what platform you do choose or however you decide to market online, um, definitely, definitely make sure that you have reviewed the advertising guidelines, both with your code of ethics and with your license law. Um, we have a fantastic uh, link to uh, Minnesota Realtors put together a great guide for that. We have a link to it on our website. Uh, we will put it in the video to this um, micro learning video. Um, so review it, make sure that you are following those guidelines, make sure that you are um, indicating your brokerage. That's a big one uh, that many people may miss. And so um, create those professional accounts because you get the analytics, but also that's where you can put all of those um, you know, brokerage name and, and your realtor and sort of check all those boxes that you need to do. And then you can always share from your business to your personal to, to sort of jumpstart your following um, without breaking those rules. So that, that's my second tip today. So thank you both uh, for talking social media marketing. This was a lot of fun. I'm sure we'll get more questions later. Yeah, thank you for having yeah. me.